All right, y'all. Uh, good Thanksgiving morning to you. Um, it is about 8.20 in the morning. I've been meaning to do this video for a long time and yet just getting around to it. <clears throat> uh, first and foremost, I just want to say th happy Thanksgiving to everybody and um, reflecting back on this year and what I'm thankful for is, you know, in a large part is this audience that followed me through the through hike and um, just meant the world to me uh, during those 113 days and beyond. So first and foremost, from my family to all of you, uh, happy Thanksgiving and I hope today finds you safe and warm and uh, some good food sitting in front of you. And for those who get caught up in the madness of Black Friday that starts really on Thursday, God bless you. I'd hate to be you. Um, I'm going to do uh, another quick, I think this video, um, day 15, is only about eight minutes long, even though it was my longest day to date. Uh, just between the cold and the smokies and the ice and all the other environmental factors, just didn't do a lot of filming this day. Um, and again, I'm just going to get us to Standing Bear Hostel, and then um, I'm going to go ahead and call index on this series of videos, and then decide where we're going next. Um, I have been steadily building up and buying, purchasing new gear. Um, I have no through hike in my future, but that's just me. I told somebody in a comment, I think it was uh, Warren Davidson, um, that's what the matrix does to you when you can't go out and hike. Uh, you can at least sit here and buy gear and get ready if, the, if you ever get the chance to do it again. So um, my intent with that is to help the 2018 through hikers and uh, I'm going to lay out all my kit and I'm going to show you exactly what I would take knowing what I know now if I was to start again in February at Springer. Um, and hopefully that video will be coming out in a week or two. All right, y'all, that's about it for now. I'm going to switch on over to the uh, Smokies, and uh, we'll go with day 15. All right, here we go. Um, so the last time, and this is about a month ago, I understand, um, last time we had just come over Klingsman Dome, I was running from the next front that was coming through with the rain, uh, which was typical for uh, the Smokies for us. And I made it down to Mount College Shelter, which is right here. My marker 205. Uh, got there early. Ended up having um, a pretty packed house. I mean, we had plenty of room for more people, but I, we probably had five, six, seven people in the shelter that night. Uh, I remember specifically uh, Downward Cow was there with me and another female who I can't remember her name, but it was hilarious because all the guys that I had met the day before were all trying to basically stay ahead of her because uh, they felt like she was stalking them a little bit even though I'm not sure that was true uh, just humorous to hear the stories but anyway she was a, a really good hiker she did 19 this day to get to Mount Collins so impressive um, for sure um, so I woke up really early on the morning of day 15 wanted to get some miles in uh, and my goals were either I was going to do like 18 or I was going 24 and my whole goal was to position myself to exit the Smokies the next day and get to Standing Bear Hostel, where I thought I was going to stay. Ended up not staying there, just did a quick resupply. But that was that was my strategy as I woke up and exfilled out of Mount Collins. Uh, Mount Collins is 0.5 off the trail, you can see right here. I uh, don't like that, but I tell you, I didn't have any other choices with that front coming through. And it ended up being a nice shelter. It feels like you're off down in the middle of nowhere, and you kind of are. Uh, but it had a good water source. Um, and it's a very nice shelter, and they had bear cables too. All right, uh, as we can see the terrain, I was going to leave, and I started walking downhill a lot that day. Uh, the trail, Rocky and Rudy, I do remember that. And we're going to cross over into Newfoundland Gap, which is a very famous place on the trail, and that's where you see a, a lot of the videos. That's where the, um, the very nice restroom with flushable toilets is. Um, that's where the sign of Katahdin that you'll see in my video, uh, I think it's 1972 miles left to Katahdin. And this is where a lot of people will get off and head into Gatlinburg because this parking lot is normally full of folks. And this is for all you 2000. All right, sorry about that. Had to banish Cotton out of here because she keeps seeing people walk across the point, across what used to be the lake. But anyway, 
Yep, so this parking lot is usually where people uh, file into Gatlinburg. You can find a, a ride for all the 2018 folks um, coming through here. This is this is a parking lot normally full, especially on the weekends, and uh, easy to catch a ride in. I did not stop here. I was luckily moving fast enough to where my food supply was going to be good. But for the slower food moving folks who aren't doing a whole lot of miles every day, um, you will probably need to resupply um, at some point in Gatlinburg, and this is a good place to get off. Not the only place, but a good place. Okay, so um, as always, make use of the privy, or I'm sorry, the restroom when you can. I did. It was warm. It was heated. It was cold as hell this day, so I stayed in there for a little while and then uh, then headed on up this hill. It's a pretty rough climb. It was so icy this day. Uh, these are those little things that you just never forget, but everything had froze over the night before, um, and this was just freaking miserable. I fell a couple of times coming up here and there was very little room to walk around the ice except for stepping on rocks where there was ice covering them but you just couldn't see it. So that's that's why I fell a few times. So all you folks starting in February and March just know um, today would have this day here day 15 would have been good to throw on my micro spikes but yet I chose not to, whether I was lazier, I just really didn't understand what they would do for you at that time. And man, micro spikes would have saved me coming up here. Uh, so don't be scared to put those micro spikes on, especially if you're carrying them. Um, just kept walking. Okay, so here's a fun little story real quick. Ice water spring shelter. I didn't film this. I think I talked about it a little bit on the video or maybe not. Um, so all the guys, if you remember back not the night at Mount Collins shelter but the night before I shared the shelter with nine people Kansas being one of them Colorado uh, downward Cal uh, a couple other folks were in there and um, uh, they hadn't oh in blueberry they hadn't done a big miles to get there that day in fact they only did like nine or something they were disappointing themselves so they we were talking and I told them I'd done 20 something to get there so they were motivated for this next day um, which was um, the day prior to 15. So it would have been day 14 for me. The day I stopped at Mountain Collins Shelter, they kept going. They did a big day that day. The problem was it was pouring on them the whole time. They got soaked. They got as soaked as I did the night before, the day before. Um, the day that I entered the smoke is when I was just miserable. Um, not all of them had got soaked that day. So they were still kind of fresh in their minds, right? And this is, I'm telling you this story because you're going to go through this as a through hiker or a long session hiker on the AT. You're kind of fresh. Uh, maybe walking in the rain won't be that bad, even though you just saw three or four of us come in the shelter the night before, miserable as we can be. Uh, it just doesn't compute that well in your mind, especially up front. So they said, you know what? Heck with it, man. We're going to put in a big day. So they did, and they got soaked. And the problem with that is they stayed at Ice Water Spring Shelter. And what a great name for this shelter for them, because if you see, they are just under 6,000 feet. And let me tell you, when the temperature drops like it did this night, the last place you want to be is just under 6,000 feet um, on the side of the mountain they were on. And, and you couldn't strategize that. You didn't know. You didn't know which way the wind was going to be blowing, which side of the mountain was going to freeze hard. It just happens that that side of the mountain froze really hard. And everything they had in the shelter that was wet froze solid. So I remember well, I walked by here and I saw a guy named Gator, I think was his name. Um, he was standing outside and I said, Hey man, is everybody in there? He's like, yeah, they're still getting up. All their stuff's frozen. They were trying to warm their stuff up so they could put it on. Excuse my dogs barking. Uh, anyway. Yeah. So they had their shoes froze, their socks froze. They couldn't get the stuff on. I remember Kansas telling me later it was just miserable, but, um, yeah. So just keep in mind, just realize that. Walking in the rain when the next day the temperatures are barely going to get above freezing if they do at all is not a good thing and make the right choice and stop. Um, they were warriors though. They got up. I think some of them took a zero here maybe that day and dried their stuff out. But I know Kansas and Colorado and those dudes I think took off uh, just, just true warriors. So I passed them. I got there at like 8 in the morning. So I'd already covered that ground. I, that shows you how early I started. Uh, kept walking, walking. There are some great views. This is where Charles Charlie's Bunyan is, folks. There's a little side trail to get to that. That is gorgeous. Listen to my dog. Sounds like they're dying because they want to get in here. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous vista right here, and I've got pictures of it. Um, it's it's 
some of my most beautiful pictures of the trail because of the way the ice was on the trees and the clouds were coming up. Just beautiful. So uh, that's when I finally started understanding what the Smokies were about because those were the first views I really got to see. Kept walking. Going to go ahead and flip the page here. Um, so my, my choices were to go to Tri-Corner Knob Shelter uh, at mile marker 221. That would have been about 18 or to keep going to Cosby Knob Shelter. I got here, felt pretty good. It is. It had been freezing that day. I don't even know how to describe this. Um, it was so cold this day, but depending on what side of the mountain you're on, on one side it's sunny and warm, the other side it's it's like Antarctica. Uh, and you're up at 6,000 almost all day. Um, so I decided just to press on. And then I will tell you, coming down this ridge line right here, this is where I finally got to stop. I think and call my wife and turn on my video camera and let her share the moment with me and I that was a, a really special moment of I'm there by myself but I can just take this technology pick it up and point it and push the camera button and my wife can tune in and, and enjoy it with me um, so that was pretty cool made it down to Cosby Knob shelter uh, right as it was getting dark uh, it's a big shelter there was a lot of people there I think only one through hiker um, he was a a pharmacy guy. He was from Jasper, Georgia, which is where my dad's from, which is real close to Amicola Falls. And it was, so it was cool to meet him. I can't remember his name right now. It was something Doc. I can't remember, but really good guy. And there was another funny story here too. I may tell when the video's playing, but yeah, ended up going, what is that? Uh, 27 miles that day I did um, to get to the shelter and position me to get out of the Smokies the next day. All right, switching over to the video. All right, good morning, everybody. It is 0500, that's 5 o'clock in the morning on the 24th, Black Friday. I originally filmed this yesterday, and um, for many reasons, couldn't use the film because Cotton and Blossom were going crazy the whole way through it. It was just so loud, so I'm going to go ahead and refilm this piece of it anyway, and then I'll get this out on the airwaves on the interwebs uh, first thing this morning before I got to head into work for a little while uh, so we'll go ahead and roll roll the video all right y'all here's the situation it is day 15 March the 2nd I ended up staying at Mount Collins shelter yesterday so 24 to first day 14 yesterday try to do some big miles today we'll see man it got cold it poured all day yesterday into the night when I went to sleep now everything on the trail is frozen over so pretty treacherous walking all the puddles anybody that's walked through the Smokies knows how uh, deep the puddles can get on the trail well now all those are ice skating rinks so um, anyway making the best of it heading north just for anybody that's uh, coming through this year, 2018, through the Smokies, um, this little parking lot right here is mile marker 205.2, so 205.2. It's Road Prong Trail, and uh, in the book it says AT Skirts Clemens Dome Road, so this could be Clemens Dome Road for all I know right here, but there is a parking lot, and this is in the book, um, Elevations 5273. I already did a couple of miles anyway. It's um... 6.48, so I've been walking for about an hour, an uh, hour and a half. All right, y'all, hope the day's going good. The plan is to be out of the Smokies tomorrow afternoon, hopefully be at Standing Bear Hostel. All of us want to get out of the Smokies. It hasn't welcomed us, and we're going to welcome our departure. All right, bye. All right, y'all. Still day 15, it's about 7.25, approaching Newfound Gap. Um, I don't know, the smoke is right. I think most of us, A, we probably have a, probably a little jaded towards it just because of the weather. Man, we got our ass kicked the past two days. Luckily, I got my 14 in before 11 yesterday and got to the shelter right before it started. But, plan is going to be, I'm either going to go 18 or 19 to a shelter, 
or about 24 to a shelter today. I'm wanting to push the 24. That'll leave 13 miles back out, or 13 miles to um, Standing Bear Hostel and out of the Smokies, which will be good. All right, so the first shelter I was trying to make it to is Tri Corner Knob Shelter. That was at mile marker 221.9. And uh, just as a reminder, I left Mountain Collin Shelter this morning at mile marker 202. So that in itself, that's about a <clears throat> almost a 20 mile day to try corner knob. And then uh, the other shelter that I could make it to is Cosby Knob Shelter. And that's where I ended up stopping at. And that's at mile marker 229.6. So almost uh, 27 and a half miles that day. And then uh, I leave Standing Bear Hostel the next morning. And that should put me in hot springs hopefully sunday afternoon it's thursday right now so pretty cool there's a cool little rock wall the road right up on top of it so anyway gonna do just a little bit of resupply at standing bear to make it to hot springs and then do a full resupply there take a knee row whatever's left of the day and then head out towards Irwin the next morning uh, my policy on zeros, I probably said it already. Man, I don't see the need in one, especially this uh, soon. All right, so you can hear my immaturity um, this early in the trail talking about how I didn't need a zero up to this point. Day 15, arguably, I'm doing okay um, body wise. I had taken a couple of knee rows by this point. Um, you'll quickly realize that. Man, you're going to have to take zeros, and I think it's a good thing. And I think by the time you get to the northeast, pause this real quick. By the time you get to the northeast, um, <clears throat> if you took some strategic zeros and did some good recovery, your body's going to feel much better than mine probably did as I entered New Hampshire and Maine, especially Maine. Maine was really brutal on my body. Um, so anyway, for all those who are coming up and I hear this in other people's videos as well as they're trying to coach the next through hiking class or future through hiking classes. Just get over your ego that, man, you're going to live in the woods for six months and you're not going to stay in town or you don't need towns because you do. And you need to be able to recover somewhere in comfort, whether that's your tent inside town and you can go in and get some Gatorade and some other things to help that body recover. Just get over it. Know that you need to do it. Doesn't mean you're not a warrior or <clears throat> unless your plan is to break some kind of AT record um, and just plan in those zeros and don't plan them too far out because everything changes and I, I will keep harping on that don't make plans more than a, a couple of days out because you're just going to drive yourself crazy because they're going to just keep changing all right so we're walking into newfound gap right now this is mile marker 206.8 um, here they have a parking lot obviously it's huge um, on a busy weekend this place is packed uh, they have flushable toilets here they have trash cans and it's a beautiful vista and less and it's beautiful this morning but the wind's blowing like 40 miles an hour and it was freaking freezing so I go huddle in the bathroom for a little while here Another thing to point out, uh, you can see how massive this parking lot is, trash cans right here. <clears throat> this is the road 15 miles to the, hold on, where is it? Gatlinburg's 15 miles to the west. So you can catch or lift. Most of these people are going to go back through Gatlinburg when they exfil out of the Smokies. Uh, easy to get a lift into Gatlinburg. Supposedly, I didn't have to go. Um, and it, and you know, 15 miles, that's a long way, but hitching out there is easy. I don't know about hitching back. Um, I'm sure there's shuttles that you could take. But the strategy point here is for slower hikers that aren't doing as many big miles, you've been in the Smokies now for four or five days, you're going to be running short on food, and you're still going to have to make it another 30 or so miles at least before you're going to get to a decent resupply point. So a lot of through hikers have to go into Gatlinburg. Um so this is where you're going to do it at right here and just be prepared and just know Gatlinburg if you've never been there it's a tourist trap um, it's kind of a cool town but everybody's saying it's not that great of a place to resupply because it has tourist prices um, but again 
this is this is a strategy point in the Smokies for me. I, I got here in the morning of day three, um, so I was fine. I was fine to make it to Standing Bear Hostel at least to give me a couple of items from their resupply and then make it into Hot Springs. And that right there is why you threw hike. That right there just fired me up. I, I lived through two pretty miserable days in the Smokies, wasn't having a good time, and this changed the whole perspective right here. Almost there, y'all. Two things I want to point out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, you could see my gloved hand coming over trying to turn off my camera. Uh, Finding a good pair of gloves that you can manipulate your phone with or whatever camera you're using is critical. I did not have a good pair. Um, I paid for this the entire time on the trail when I was trying to film with gloves on. I'd have to take my gloves off to manipulate the camera a lot of times. Very painful. So you got two choices. Research a good pair of gloves um, that you can manipulate your phone with them on. Um, and I would highly suggest that. And if anybody has any suggestions, please comment below because I need a pair. Or B, Dan Haley bought a, a cheap pair in Walmart, his orange ones, if you didn't see them towards the end of his hike. And they're the ones that turn in from mitts or you could unvelcro the mitt part and fold it over and it attaches to the back of his hand with a magnet. And then his fingers, at least the fingertips are open. Uh, hindsight being 2020, I would probably use something like that so I can manipulate my phone much easier and just pull off that mitt part. Second thing about this sign right here, or the first thing that I'm mentioning, but this is important. This is day 15 for me. Some people, this is upwards of day 30 or beyond, and everybody else falls somewhere in between those two, um, those two dates, except for the extreme hikers who this might be day seven for them. However, just imagine you've been out here for 20 to 25 days. Um, you just got your butt kicked two days in the Smokies. You got rained on before. Your body hurts. You're aching. And then you come up on this sign. Katahdin, Maine, 1,972 miles. Folks, this sign is one of the biggest kicks in the junk that you will have on the entire trail in Early Riser's opinion. To think that you've been moving for 15 to 30 days and you still have 1,972 miles out of 2,189 to go is almost so ego deflating and so disheartening that it just makes you want to turn around and find somebody and go into Gatlinburg and quit. So this is a mental challenging sign right here, our mentally challenging sign. Uh, just be prepared for it. The great thing is there's not a lot of Katahdin main signs. Um, this early in the trail and thank God for that because we should all be taking it day by day at this point right here um, How many miles am I going to do today? And maybe what am I going to do tomorrow? We're not focused on Katahdin, Maine because that number right there Will kill you. So just keep that in mind because some of you be going into Gatlinburg after seeing that sign right there You're Like man, can I really go back to the trail and do 1972 more miles after all I've been through already? So just beware I kind of wish that sign wasn't there. It's kind of cool for the touristy people, but for through hikers, that sign right there sucks bad. Almost there. So, it just shows you come over one mountain and the whole environment <clears throat> changes. It is cold and frozen. All right, y'all. What you're seeing here, that is all ice. So, this whole trail is frozen over. And these rocks look dry. And I thought they were dry because I didn't want to step on this. And I stepped right here and like right here, there and then there. And when I my foot hit this, I went straight down. And I tell you, that is a sheer drop off right there as well. So you got to be careful. But my point to this is, well, my point to this is, if like to go to the Smokies in February or March, especially, you need to have micro spikes. I can't remember if I had got rid of them already. I don't think I had. Maybe I had. Heck, I don't even remember at this point. But I should have had them on this morning. So people are, you carry micro spikes and then you're sitting there waiting to put them on for some magical condition. 
pause this right here because I love these views. Yeah, everybody's waiting for some magical condition to don or put on your micro spikes, right? If there's ice on the trail and you don't have many places to step, and even if you're stepping on dry rocks, man, put your micro spikes on. Put them on. They can't do anything but help you at that point. They get aggravating after a while. Um, but if y'all remember, I walked all the way up and all the way down um, Musalak with my micro spikes on, and they did fabulous. I didn't bend them. They were looked brand new when I got done with it. The point being is I was very inexperienced with micro spikes, but I'm telling you, if there's ice on the trail, you should have some traction on your feet because it's days like today in this video, day 15 for me, that I fell so many times and got so lucky that I didn't put myself down for good off the trail. When I think I was still carrying my micro spikes on my back and I could have had them on and prevented probably almost every fall that I took that day. This is, so that video right there, is, this is from Charlie's, this is Charlie's Bunyan right here, folks. That, there's a little side trail off the main AT. Um, hopefully the weather's good when you come through there and you got to go. It's, it's a narrow goat path and it feels like you're going to fall off. And Charlie's Bunyan, you have a little rock you can climb up and I was on top of the rock here. Uh, it feels dangerous and it probably is but it is amazing and one of the better views on the trail so check it out all right y'all now i get the smokies gorgeous incredible amazing Alright y'all, it's 2 o'clock, day 15, March 2nd, you can see this is just a wild day, wherever the sun hadn't hit, you're walking through a, I mean the ground is frozen solid, and you can see right up, probably ahead, as soon as the sun hits it, it's like it's springtime, it's hard to layer appropriately, I need to stay a little cold on days like this, I want to put another layer on, but as soon as you start those climbs, you start sweating. Sweating's bad. Anyway, enough lesson. Crap! I'm telling you, it's slick out here, y'all. All day spikes. long. I've fallen probably about five times today. Um. All right, everybody, look at this track real quick because I just said micro spikes there. I just slipped on some ice right back there. <clears throat> True. A lot of this trail right here in front of you, it's dry and it's perfect. But as soon as you get up in these shady parts, that right there, that's ice. All the way up through these shady parts is ice. There's no reason you can't wear your micro spikes. Everybody's waiting for the snow or ice condition. You don't have to wait for snow or ice to put your micro spikes on. You can walk in your micro spikes on dirt or roots or whatever, and it will give you the same kind of traction. Again, they get annoying after a while. I get it. Uh, but annoying and your feet hurting at the end of the day are a lot better than your knee blown out or a concussion. Two interesting things. I passed a northbounder, Jolly. If anybody knows Jolly, he's alive and well, moving northbound. Don't know how far I'll make it today. Um, I saw him on trailjournals.com before I left, so that was cool to meet him. Bulldogs, probably about 15 miles behind now. Um, and then I met a southbounder today, first one. I don't think there's many left out here, but uh, his name is, oh crap, Kilo. His name's Kilo. He's from Georgia. He started at Katahdin in August, but he took a month off for um, Christmas and New Year's. All right, so the cool thing is day 15, I passed the last southbounder of the season, at least that I've passed in Kilo. Obviously, he was really late because he took a month, month and a half off for the holidays. The next southbounder I would meet would be during, you know, the 2017 season. Um, and that would be when I crossed over the Karatuk River on the uh, canoe. They were waiting on the other side when I got there. So pretty cool. I'm sorry. They came across um, when the canoe came over to pick me up. They came across and 
and I crossed over. So went that long without passing anybody from going southbound from the Smokies all the way up to Caratuck. And then from Caratuck to Katahdin passed probably several hundred. Pretty cool. Anyway, he's ready to get out smoky as I am. He's only been in them for a day. Too many rules. Anyway, still beautiful. Look at this. All right, so speaking of Kilo real quick, um, I passed him on a Vista on a really narrow ridge in a Vista, and he was sitting there enjoying some 420 time, if you know what I'm talking about. And... Um, he had had to, he spent the night at Tri Corner Knob Shelter because that's where I was still planning on staying at this point. And he said the Ridge Runner was staying there. He stayed there with him last night and he thinks he's going to stay there again tonight. So I was like, yep, I'll stay in there. So that was my decision point to push on to Cosby Knob. Um, and he said it was just, it sucked staying in there with him. The guy was a pretty cool dude, but just preaching about rules and. You know, the guy was doing his job, but for through hikers, especially for him who'd been doing it since August, man, the last thing you want is this, what Dan Haley called him as little, I can't remember what he said, but it was, it made me chuckle. Uh, I'm not trying to be too degrading here because you never know, I may be a ridge runner one day, but um, yeah, it was funny to hear Kilo talking about it. And he was just, he was like, I, he, I'm done with the Smokies and he'd only been in them, in them a day. So Smokies are, are brutal. Us through hikers, man, you, you're used to just kind of getting to enjoy the trail as it comes and then you get into a place like this and, and you got people just somewhat on your case and that's good for in some ways and in some ways it's just a pain in the butt medieval forests pretty cool pretty cool all right i'm gonna do 24 to 25 today it's just the way it is have a short day into uh Standing bear. Well, it'll be about 13 not too short of a day Get in there and take a partial Nero And then start the assault on hot springs the next morning try to get in hot springs Sunday All right, I'll probably uh, unless I see something magnificent Or amazing I'll probably catch up with y'all when I get to the shelter Just unbelievable Can see the world Wow. Unbelievable. All right, y'all. The cool thing about, look at this. Unbelievable. Like I just said, like my heart's beating faster right now and I'm getting like kind of sweaty because I just love this so much. And this was a special Vista. These are the things you remember. A, I had great cell phone service right now. I had three or four bars of LTE on Verizon. And by the way, Verizon's decent all the way through the Smokies, especially when you get up on the ridge line. So don't let anybody convince you you're not going to have cell phone coverage because you will. And I would argue that across the whole trail for Verizon customers. So I called Miss ER from this spot right where I'm standing right after I filmed this. And um, we did a conference call and then I got to share this Vista with her. And I know it doesn't, didn't look as good on the phone, um, but man, we got to share this this amazing view together so very cool and if for those of you who have significant others sitting at home supporting you man it's just early riser suggestion just dial them up every now and then and share the trail with them because it it's magical it is freaking magical i need to be getting to down this hill to get to my doggone shelter but i cannot just get past the spot unbelievable the trail gives up what it wants to give up. Giving early riser some good stuff today. Blessed. Okay, I'm gonna rewind that a little bit. So as I do my final close up here, we can stare at something pretty instead of my closing scene. <clears throat> All right, so I didn't film any more this day. And this, this Vista right here is at mile marker 224. Um, is it Deer Creek Gap or close to that on the way down? And there, this is close to where the plane wreckage is too, by the way. But um, yeah. But anyway, I didn't go looking for that. But I'm still a long way from the shelter that I was going to, the Cosby Knob. I mean, not a long way, but still had about four miles to go at this point. 
I get in a Cosby Knob shelter. It's getting dark. There's it's spring break now. So there were two two guys from Michigan, two students from the University of Michigan there who had driven down and just hiked up to Cosby Knob Shelter and were camping. They were going to hike back down and drive back to Michigan the next day. Really good to meet you guys. I don't remember your names, but man, I enjoyed meeting you guys if you ever see this video. And then the guy from Jasper, the farm, the pharmacy doc, uh, his name was Dr. Doc something. I can't remember, but such a good dude. Um, and I'm going to tell a quick story about him. Because along with us at that shelter was this um, American Japanese kid or Japanese American kid and a very smart kid. But he had obviously been watching some videos or something and he had bought every piece of camping gear that he could fit inside his gigantic backpack. And he was supposed to be doing a 14 day excursion through the Smokies. So this is his first night or second night actually. Kansas had stayed with him the night before or the night after this, I can't remember. Um, but Kansas knew who he was. He, this dude was so popular on the trail because everybody couldn't believe him. He, he was just such a unique character and annoying as hell. Um, but in a, in a funny, cute kind of way, if you will. Um, but man, he was just noisy. Guys were trying to go to sleep. He was stoking the fire. And then finally Doc took him under his wings and, and just had so much patience with this kid and it was so cool to see that night kind of teaching him how to build a fire and teaching him how to do things and doc was even running out of patience with this kid but um man i learned some lessons inside that shelter that night of of you just got to be patient on the trail you're going to meet people that are going to push those patients um, to the extremes and you know that held true all the way through the trail um, but just watching doc have that patience with that kid uh, gave me patience in my life from that point forward and I still struggle with it with my son on days and my son's a great kid um, so anyway doc if you ever see this he's from Jasper where my dad lives uh, such a small world out on the trail but I appreciate you man and I know we didn't talk about it then but I took a I learned a lot from you that day I hope I hope he made his through hike all the way through um, I have no clue if he did or not but I'm hoping he did all right, y'all, that was long. I'm the only person that can turn an eight-minute video into 26 minutes. It's been a while. I got a lot to talk about um, going forward. Um, I'm only going to do one more of these videos uh, because I think after after the Smokies, man, that's if you can just get through the Smokies and get to Hot Springs, the statistics in, from the past tell us that you have a good chance of making it through your through hike. So, um I'm going to switch themes and start trying to focus on getting the 2018 class ready to go gear wise um, and answer any questions that you guys may have. So if you have any questions, post them down in the comments. Last thing is I had a, one of the commenters ask, hey, what, what books would you suggest for somebody who's going to through hike or hike and something they could read? and something that might prep them for some of the things that I've been talking about up to this point anyway. I thought that was a great question. I'm going to pull up. I'm going to give you one suggestion today and I'll try to give a book every now and then if y'all remind me because I'll forget. Y'all know me. The first book that I would read if I could go back and do it again is The Happiness Advantage and it's by Sean Aker. So it's S-H-A-W-N and his last name is A-C-H-O-R, Acre, I believe. The Happiness Advantage. I, I read it on Kindle. I got it downloaded on my phone and my, my, yeah, my Kindle. But um, that book right there is just a great way to help you stay in the present moment and realize that man, being happy precedes success, not the other way around. Making it all the way through your through hike is not going to make you happy. If you can't find happiness throughout that through hike, you're not going to be successful. And that's the whole premise to the book. And reading that before you step off will help you, I think, at least stay in the present moment. And I wish I had known this book existed before because it's honestly, it's backed by a lot of good research and it's, it, it was life changing for me. Um, one other book I will offer is Lifting the Veil of Duality. Now, this might be too deep for some folks, um, but it's by Andreas. Moritz, 
and the last name is M-O-R-I-T-Z. This is going to be a little more complicated read for some, especially if you're a religious sort of Christianity or Muslim or a Buddha or whatever. Um, some of those religions will tie into this book really well, and then some it will counter them a little bit. So just be careful with that one. I'm not trying to get anybody spun up. And then the last thing I will say is Alan Watts. So Watts, W-A-T-T-S. Anybody that grew up in the 60s and 70s probably knows who this is. Um, <clears throat> he is an amazing brain who thinks about existential thinking his entire life. Like that's, that's what he focused on. Um, he's just an amazing man. And I love listening to his talks on YouTube. If you YouTube and search for Alan Watts, it's A-L-A-N-W-A-T-T-S. Uh, there's thousands of speeches on there that he gives that people have put music to and, and cool visuals to. But I just got done reading one of his books. It's called Eastern Wisdom, comma, Modern Life. So Eastern Wisdom, Modern Life. Um, and it was fabulous. And it will uh, push your, your thinking to the fringes on why we're here and what everything's about. So those are some cool books. If, if you are a deep thinker and you like to recede inside your head and think while you're walking, um, those are some good books that will challenge those thought processes as you're walking on the trail and hopefully turn your experience into, um, or at least let's just say it will maximize your experience time on the trail. Not for everybody. Some people read these and be like, man, what is this crap talking about? I just want to go out and camp and hike and, and, do some drinking in town. Yep, man, I got that too. That's that's fun too. So, um, but for those who are looking for that deeper soul searching, man, those three books right there may be able to help you out. All right, y'all, appreciate it. Sorry it's been so long. I will uh, I will catch back up with y'all soon. Cool.